Hi, my name is Neil. I'm with Dorkaholics.com. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you, Dr. Rosalie Lopez. Thank you. Pleasure to speak with you. Mm -hmm. As a direct directorate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, um, I'm curious what being a, a volcano expert entails. Well, I uh, study volcanoes uh, on Earth, but also on other planets. Uh, so I have uh, done a lot of work on uh, uh, the volcanoes of Jupiter's moon Io, and Io is the most volcanically active object in the solar system, and also some on volcanoes on Mars, and even um, uh, what we call cryovolcanoes, which are uh, cold volcanoes that spew out water, uh, like on Enceladus and, and uh, Titan and other icy moons. So I like volcanoes, uh, doesn't matter where they are. Mm -hmm. I, I hope we have time later to, for me to ask you about those uh, off-world volcanoes. But in regards to rescue from Fakari, um, I'm curious what your thoughts were on how the documentary went about telling the story. I thought the documentary was fantastic. Uh, you know, I was actually in Wakari, uh, White Island in 2014. So I did that same tour and uh, I was aware that it was potentially dangerous. Uh, although the chances that there would be an explosion at the exact time uh, when a tourist group was there was pretty small. Nevertheless, it, it was a risk. Um, and uh, I was a little bit surprised that um, uh, there were so many tours there. Um, but I thought the documentary did a, did a really great job of uh, telling the story. Mm. Very tragic story, of course. Mm -hmm. What is the most important lesson that you think we can all learn from this tragic event? Well, volcanoes are... Uh, basically dangerous, and some volcanoes are more dangerous than others. Um, if you go to a place like um, Kilauea in Hawaii or Iceland, one of the Icelandic volcanoes, they're usually uh, not explosive. So what makes a volcano really dangerous is if they are explosive. And, uh, uh, and that's what happened at Wakari. And in fact, we knew that that type of volcano uh, could have an explosion uh, suddenly. And, you know, volcanoes can do that. Um, when I was a graduate student, I did work on Mount Etna in Sicily, and there was an unexpected uh, explosion because there had been some uh, rain and some collapse, and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, there was like a steam explosion, uh, which is similar to what happened here at uh, Wakari. And it was without any warning. And in fact, some tourists were killed there uh, as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, on Wakari, there was also a, a, a pyroclastic flow. And, uh, and that's the most deadly thing that a, a volcano can put out. Uh, so it's very hard to escape from that. Mm -hmm. You mentioned having traveled to Fakari before. I'm curious, how many times in your life have you been to Fakari? Oh, I was there only once in 2014. And uh, one thing that I thought was quite curious was um, uh, I was with a, a colleague, another volcanologist, and um, uh, we, um, we got in touch with um, uh, one of the volcanologists from New Zealand and asking, uh, is it possible for us to go visit, you know, when we're expecting that maybe we would go with them um, because we knew it was a potentially dangerous place. And the reply was that, um, well, actually, we have uh, uh, a lot of restrictions on uh, going to Wakari, but you can take this tour. And uh, I thought that was really quite strange because usually the volcanologists can go and if it's somewhere potentially dangerous and the tourists wouldn't go. But here it seemed that uh, it was easier to go as a tourist. So that's what we did. Uh, and it was a fantastic place. I mean, for a volcanologist, it was beautiful. It was interesting, um, beautiful sulfur formations. Uh, but, you know, all the time, 
uh, I was looking out for any potential change uh, and, uh, and an escape route. I got to ask, being a, a volcanologist and just hearing the way you're describing your trip to Fakari, what is it about volcanoes that interests you so much? Well, um, volcanoes are very important for, uh, you know, the geology of planets in general. Volcanoes are how planets lose heat. And uh, um, I started uh, studying volcanoes on a sort of very theoretical point of view because I wanted to study volcanoes on other planets. But after I started going to volcanoes and after I saw uh, an eruption, I was completely fascinated. I mean, it's really the power of nature and, uh, and uh, standing uh, on a volcano or near uh, when there is a, a, an eruption going on. And of course, I, I know what's safe and what isn't. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> I know what's safe and, and what isn't and, uh, and certain types of eruptions uh, such as lava flows or what we call lava fountains are, uh, um, you know, fairly safe to watch if you know what you're doing. But places like Wakari that can explode, uh, that's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. have, have you been to any other, I guess, safely but active volcano sites? And, and what were those experiences like compared to the tour that happens on Wakari? Uh, yes, I have been to um, volcanoes, in fact, on every continent, including Antarctica. I was on Mount Erebus a, a few years ago. And uh, I uh, tend to study what we call basaltic volcanoes and lava flows, lava lakes, uh, because uh, those are predominantly the types of volcanoes that we find on other planets. So I don't tend to go to the really dangerous volcanoes like Wakari, I have been to some, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, for example, in uh, Montserrat in the, in the Caribbean. Uh, but volcanoes that can put out pyroclastic flows, pyroclastic flows are these flows of hot gas and ash and rock uh, that can move very, very fast. <clears throat> um, uh, what happened on Vesuvius, for example, in 79 AD that, you know, people... Uh, tend to know about, uh, those, are, those are extremely dangerous. So um, uh, I am very careful uh, uh, to, you know, go into any volcano that could have an, a sudden explosion, a, a pyroclastic flow, uh, because, uh, you know, those are very, very deadly. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got to ask, because you mentioned it before, um, other planets and volcanoes, you mentioned a little bit like cryovolcanoes, and you mentioned visiting volcanoes in Antarctica. Is, is there any other commonalities or differences between Earth volcanoes and uh, other planets' volcanoes? Uh, yeah, so there are, um, there, there are a lot of uh, differences, but also some commonalities. Uh, for example, um, you know, volcanoes on Mars uh, are mostly shield volcanoes, but M Martian volcanoes are much larger than terrestrial volcanoes. Uh, and shield volcanoes are the type that you find in Iceland and Hawaii. So they're mostly not explosive. They are made up of uh, long lava flows such as Mauna Loa that's erupting at the moment uh, in Hawaii. I mean, the Martian volcanoes are no longer active uh, uh, as far as we know. Uh, and, but there are places like Io, Jupiter's moon Io, that has lava lakes. Now, lava lakes are uh, quite rare on Earth. I have been to some in uh, uh, Ethiopia and uh, Vanuatu in the South Pacific and also Erebus in Antarctica, but lava lakes on Earth are rare. Um, uh, on uh, Jupiter's moon Io, uh, it seems to be the dominant type of, uh, of eruption. Uh, so um, uh, it's, it, and you learn a lot by comparing terrestrial volcanoes with volcanoes on other planets, 
uh, the data we have from other planets uh, are very limited. Uh, on Earth, we can actually go there, we can collect samples, we can bring samples back to the lab and analyze them. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, that's m much, much harder to do uh, on other planets. And uh, uh, so when we have only brought back samples from uh, the moon uh, so far. And, uh, there is a, a mission now that's going to bring back samples from Mars. Um, but, um, uh, it, you know, so you learn a lot by doing the comparisons between uh, Earth and planetary volcanoes. Mm. Okay. Speaking of comparisons, I'm curious, in comparison to other films and documentaries about volcanoes, what does... Um, the volcano rescue from Fakari particularly do well or, or do right in order to really capture the, the power of volcanoes? I thought that they, uh, they did a, a great job of telling the story of what happened on that day. Uh, so the focus of the documentary was really what happened that day. It was the story of, of the people, uh, you know, why people went there, it was a, a story of, uh, of survival and, uh, and it was a tragedy. And, uh, um, you know, and also uh, a story of some, um, you know, heroics like the um, helicopter pilots who um, uh, went just by themselves, uh, <laughs> even defying um, uh, orders to try to, uh, uh, to, to rescue people. Uh, and uh, and that was really uh, extraordinary, you know, and how people came together to um, uh, to, to to rescue others. Um, and um, you know, it was it was very tragic, uh, and um, and a lot of bad luck uh, that uh, there was just this sudden explosion, and uh, um, and it happened to be when some tourists uh, were on the island. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a while since I remember studying about volcanoes in, uh, in grade school, but I'm curious, are there particularly any tells or signs that a volcano is about to erupt or is it kind of a little bit too late once you can identify it? Uh, well, um, it, that depends. Uh, some volcanoes uh, really, uh, you know, give out a lot of warning signs and some uh, you know, volcanoes these days, if they are anywhere near a populated area, they're very well monitored, uh, but you can't always predict. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, some uh, you can predict very, very well. And we have had a lot of success stories uh, of predicting volcanic eruptions and evacuating people when it looks like, uh, you know, something will happen. Uh, but um, in uh, Wakari, well, you know, it, it's a little controversial. There was an increase in seismicity, it seems, a couple of weeks before, but it, it's not something that you could say um, there is going to be uh, a, a, a sudden, you know, a, a, an explosion. Um, and, uh, but with a volcano of that type, it, it really could happen any time, and it had happened. Um, a number of times before, it's just that no one was on the island uh, uh, in the you know, previous times. Thank you so much for your time today, uh, Dr. Lopez. I really enjoyed speaking to you about the film, The Volcano, Rest from Fakari, and learn more about volcanology. Thank you. Pleasure speaking to you.